Welcome to our video mass here at All Saints Parish. Assisting us this morning are Ron Mills as our lecturer. Mike Wathen is our cameraman and engineer, and uh, he will put it on YouTube for us, and Amy Eager will put it on the web and the app and wherever else so that you can see it whenever and wherever. And Mike Becker is here because mass is for his daddy today. Welcome and thank you all for your service. We're celebrating the fourth Sunday of Advent today, and we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, now that we are close to the feast of Christmas to celebrate Jesus' birthday, we focus on the fact that he is present. He is Emmanuel, as the first reading says in the gospel as well. Emmanuel means God is with us. Let's take a moment to reflect on times when we have caught a glimpse of God in our midst. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are always with us, but we seldom see you. Sometimes we are busy. Sometimes we are just not looking. And so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, pour forth your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading today is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And we're looking at Isaiah chapter 7, beginning with verse 10. The book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 7, beginning with verse 10. And at this time, a guy by the name of Ahaz is king of Judah, the southern kingdom where, Israel, where Jerusalem is. And he has some difficult decisions to make and the prophet tells him to ask for a sign from God. But Akaz is too proud to ask. And the prophet says, you'll get a sign anyway. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz saying, ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Justice shall flourish in this time and fullness of peace forever. Justice, Justice shall flourish in this time and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice, Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. The mountain shall yield peace for the Lord and the hills justice. He shall defend the afflicted among the people, save the children of the poor. Justice, Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. 
just as shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Justice shall flourish in his time, and the fullness of peace forever. May his name be blessed forever, as long as the sun his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed, and all the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. The reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. It begins with chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The next reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, beginning with verse 18. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord to the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. greatest story ever told, how God took flesh and became one of us. It's a pretty amazing story. Now, I think I've told you before that if I were God, I would have done this differently. I hope he doesn't strike me dead with a bolt lightning bolt. He came so quietly. 
I would have called a lot of attention to this fact. I would have had lightning bolts or perhaps fireworks or something. Uh, something to call attention to the fact. But instead, he was born to unknown parents in a godforsaken, unknown place in this world. I would have thought someplace like Rome would be better, someplace where the center of power was, where he could exercise power and let people know that he was there and that they should listen to him. But no, he did it very quietly, very secretly. I probably would have waited till now in history so that we have radio and television and the internet so that we could spread word instantly to all the corners of the world that God has taken flesh and is in our midst. But God had a better plan. People probably wouldn't have listened no matter what we did to make his presence known. So God did it very quietly, very secretly. Just let it be. Let people discover him as they came across him. Discover him or not discover him, depending on whether they had a God moment. There's a story about Carrie Ten Boom. You've heard of her before, I believe. She was a she was born in, in the Netherlands to a family who were watchmakers. And during the Second World War, when the Nazis were gathering up and killing the Jews, this family let Jews find a place of rest and comfort and hiding in their home. And they helped them escape so that they could get away and save their lives. Well, eventually, they were discovered and arrested. And her father and her sister were both killed. Corey spent four months in a prison before she went to a concentration camp. And she eventually survived and went on to speak about her experience and how God had been good to her and helped them save many, many people. And she went around giving talks here and there with a group who did songs and so on. And one day they were going to, they went to a prison and all these prisoners were there, but they weren't particularly happy to be there. They didn't want to particularly hear this story. And the choir started out singing, and people, the prisoners got noisier and noisier and noisier, so you could hear, hardly hear anything that was going on. And then Corey stood up at the microphone and said, when I was in prison for four months alone, I knew what loneliness was. And suddenly, the place became quiet and people listened to Corey because they said to themselves, she's one of us. She has been here. She knows what our life is like. And that's the experience that Jesus wants. He wants us to know that he knows. He wants us to know that he has experienced our fear. He has experienced our loneliness. He's experienced our sorrow. He's experienced all the dreadful kinds of things that we experience and more. He is one of us. He is God with us. He is love in the flesh. Love walking in our shoes. And he wants us to be aware of that. So hopefully we'll have God moments like those prisoners did and be able to hear what God has to say through whoever's voice God speaks. There's another story about a lady who was 85 years old and she had a, a major stroke and she couldn't speak, she couldn't walk, she could not take care of herself and her family just had to take her to a nursing home for care. She was there five years and she got to the place where she couldn't even recognize her own children. And one Christmas season the family gathered at one of their one of the siblings' houses, and they were singing Christmas carols around the piano. And one of them said, let's get mom, bring her over here. So they did. They brought mom over, 
sat her close to the piano, and continued singing Christmas carols. And one of them looked at her and saw that her lips were moving. She was singing. She was singing, O Come Away Faithful. And the words were quiet, but they were coming out of her mouth. And she was on tune, and things were wonderful. And they would look at her and nod or wave, and she would nod a bit and go on singing. Something in her stirred deep down inside where she had a God moment, and so did all her family because they saw God at work again in their mother. So let's just take a few moments to think about what God moments have we had? Where have we caught God alive and working in our lives? I think God works in all of us. God is always working, but we don't see. It's hard to catch him. Sometimes we have to look back in the rearview mirror and over a period of time see how God has been working. So let's just take a few moments and look at your life and say, what God moments have you had? Where have you caught God at work, love, walking, in human shoes? Where have you seen God in your life? We believe that God is always present at work within us and around us. Let's profess our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Attune our hearts, loving God, to hear your voice, and grant us courage to follow your will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless our church leaders with the ability to trust the guidance of your Holy Spirit and lead your church to greater holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Help us to accept all things that come our way, both the good and bad, and see your grace at work in all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle to make ends meet, sustain them with the gift of hope, and may faith be a source of strength to bear their burdens. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That our celebration of Christmas deepen our faith, increase our joy, and strengthen our families in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all who bear the burden of illness, grant them patience and peace in their time of trial. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those who have preceded us in death, especially Bill Becker, grant them everlasting joy and comfort those who mourn their loss. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And now let us pray for justice. Grant us, Lord God, a vision of your world as your love would have it, a world where the weak are protected and none go hungry or poor, a world where the riches of creation are shared and everyone can enjoy them, a world where different races and cultures live in harmony and mutual respect, a world where peace is built with justice 
and justice is guided by love. Give us the inspiration and courage to build it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. <laughs> mm. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the bodies of all his people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For the, all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice in the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glories. Without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of our hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Who is sovereign in the highest? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Who is sovereign in the highest? You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. This is the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we ask that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy and the people of God. Remember Bill Becker and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Anthony, and with all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, now let's offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
And now let us pray for peace in Ukraine. God of love, our world is wrought with war and violence, as brother turns on brother, and the innocent are awake to gunfire and bombs. May your compassion and healing move hearts and bring a new day to Ukraine. Fortify your children to resist aggression and instead become instruments of peace. We ask this in the name of the one who is the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to be worthy to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.